Hi, this is Don McAllister, and welcome to another edition of Screencasts Online for iOS. Well, in last week's Mac show, I took a look at the new version of iMovie on the Mac, now with full support for 4K video. As promised, this week I'll take a look at iMovie on iOS. The main reason for the update to iMovie is the fact that the iPhone 6S and the 6S Plus are now capable of taking 4K video. Previously, you would have needed to use Final Cut Pro on the Mac to edit 4K video, and Final Cut Pro is a £229 purchase. Plus, you'd need a fairly modern Mac to run it on. Well, Apple have excelled themselves by releasing iMovie with full support for 4K for editing and exporting to run on iOS. So you can now edit and export 4K video on your smartphone. iMovie for iOS is a free application. Uh, you actually get it with any uh, new iPhone. So if you do buy an iPhone 6S or 6S Plus, you'll get iMovie. And any modern Mac as well, you'll get a copy of iMovie for Mac. Now, as an aside, just as I released last week's Mac show, Apple announced a further update to iMovie that now adds 4K support to iMovie running on the iPad Air 2 using iOS 9.1. So now if you have an iPad Air 2, you can successfully edit 4K video using iMovie. Now I've previously covered iMovie on iOS in episodes SCOI 0143 and 144 and they deal with a lot of the basics of using iMovie on iOS. And if you're not familiar with iMovie on iOS, I would suggest that you check them out first. Now I did cover this on last week's Mac show, but just in case you missed it, I'll just run through quickly setting up 4K mode on your iPhone 6S or 6S Plus. Um, I'll actually be doing the rest of the demo using an iPad Air 2, but obviously you can't take 4K video with an iPad Air 2. So uh, you would normally take your 4K video using your iPhone. Now, if you have another camera that can take 4K resolution video, um, you can still use that footage in iMovie on your iPad. Uh, basically what you would have to do is to import that footage into your iCloud photo library and uh, let it synchronize with your iPad, and then you'll be able to access that 4K footage from your iPad. But I'm assuming that most people are probably gonna take 4K footage with the iPhone. So let me go ahead and go into settings. And then if we scroll down to the bottom, there is an option for photos and camera. And within there, there's an option to configure the camera, uh, currently 1080p at 30 frames per second, which is the default. And if we tap in, you've got four different options, uh, 720p, uh, 1080p at 30 frames or 60 frames per second. That's usually for um, very smooth video. If you want to use lots of slow motion as well, if you record at a higher frame rate, you'll get better results in slow motion. And then this one here, which is 4K at 30 frames per second. Now, once you've done that, any video you take with your iPhone will be at 4K. And if you're using the iCloud photo library, that footage will be passed back up to the cloud and then is accessible through your iPad. But let's go across to the iPad Air 2 now and let's take a look at iMovie. So I've got iMovie on my home screen if I just tap in to go into the application. And we have three tabs as we had before, video, projects and theatre. The video tab is slightly different in that we get this two pane uh, presentation. We can actually review clips from this screen. On the left hand side I've got the list of all my clips. Now these are local clips and they're also clips that are stored in the iCloud photo library as well. As you can see some of them have got cloud symbols on that just represents the fact that they're not stored locally. They're actually stored within the iCloud photo library. Now, although they are not local to the device, you can still preview them. It will actually download a thumbnail or a small resolution uh, version of the clip for you to check out. For instance, this one here, which is the keyboard. I used this in a recent tutorial. If I tap on here, you'll see we get uh, a preview in the right-hand window. And I can actually play that by tapping on the play button. It takes a few seconds to start, but there we go. And I can stop it. I can skim as well. So I can skim using my finger to see what's in that clip. Now, if I want to use this clip in a movie, I have to download it from the cloud, but I can just go ahead and tap this button here and you'll get the progress indicator showing me the full resolution version of the movie it has now been downloaded and it's now stored on my iPad. Now, if I wanted to mark just a portion of this as a favorite, I can actually use the grab handles and then I can just tap on the heart and that now becomes a favorite. And I can use favorites. Uh, I can filter for favorites when I'm actually building up my project later. There is a button up at the top, which is new, that allows you to sort either by oldest or newest first, and you can also go in and filter by favorites as well. But we'll just tap away to come out of there. So this particular view is really for you to review your clips, to download any clips from the cloud that you might want. Uh, you can also do that when you're putting your movie together as well, and also to mark favorites as well. 
Before we move on though, what I'm going to do, uh, again, going back to the previous Mac show, I actually deleted some birthday party clips from the iCloud photo library and you'll see that they don't appear here, uh, those particular birthday, yep, these are all older clips. Those birthday party clips uh, are deleted now, but they were shot in full 4K using my iPhone 6S Plus. But let's say now I want to have them on my iPad so that I can actually do some editing on here. Uh, the way I can do that, if I go out of movie, go back to photos. To get the full version of this tutorial completely for free, as well as immediate access to over 500 other Apple related tutorials, all you need to do is visit seofree.com to register for your 14 day, no obligation, free trial screencasts online membership. So that's seofree.com to register for your 14 day free trial membership.